So seven years ago, I did an exact copy of this tutorial for 3D Total. So we did ZBrush, how to make an eye. Um, and here I am seven years later doing it all over again with Nomad. So we've got radial symmetry now as I did on the video that's up above. Um, have a look at that if you haven't seen it already. And this video, we're gonna do a quick eye just to get a look at how another way of how we can make eyeballs um, for your scenes. So let's dive right in then. So if you've opened up a new scene, you've got this sphere, which is the default one, is actually made from a cube. You can see the corners there and it's subdivided. So like with Blender, when you get a cube, what we need to do is just delete that because that's not what we want. And we want a UV sphere. Now the UV sphere is exactly what we need because it's got um, uh, everything coming to a point, which is pretty much what I want for this model. But I want it to be facing to the front. So I'm going to use the gizmo. I'm going to go rotation on the red, which is on X, and I'm going to go either 90 or minus 90, and that'll rotate it to the front. Um, and to prove that, you just basically can just put the grid on if you wanted to. And you can see now there, that's snapped to the front. So we'll do snap and perspective, like so. Turn perspective off, sorry. And then we've got orthographic, and you can see it's snapped on the, on the, the front uh, orientation. So you, you've got that there and useful. So we'll validate that because it's fine as it is at the moment. So we're going to need several parts for this. We're going to need an inner part and an outer part. So And the outer part is going to be just a duplication of the inner part. So we've done that and we'll name this. So let's just come in here and we'll call this outer part. Sclera, I can't remember how you spell it, but it's, it's it's that isn't right. But it's basically the white, and it's also the bit that, that the cornea that comes over the front here. And we've got an inner bit, which is this one, and I'm just going to turn that off. So all we're looking at here is the outer bit. So we want that to change. We want it to be uh, blending opacity down to you know quite. Let's just go below halfway, and we're going to go down to material, and we'll go quite whitish and we'll go roughness we want that all the way down and metalness quite towards the bottom and that'll do for now and that gives us like a shiny outer surface so we'll force paint that turn off the wireframe and you can see you've got a, a, a glossy outer um, now what we do need to do is we need to give us the bump for the for the the, the, the cornea and the, and the lens basically an eye's got a bump at them at, at the front so we'll use clay tool and we'll do um, in fact we'll just use move like so we'll come around the side and you know what's going to happen if I move now it's just going to move it um, in an arbitrary wherever we push the brush so this is where the new feature kicks in so symmetry so what do we need we want radial and we want it down X so the the, the, the orientation that pushes us to the front um, and we'll try let's go all the way up to something like 64 so usually I do multiples two four six eight etc so we'll see what that looks like now and and you can see there it's got a problem so this is explained in the first video a little bit which if you look above now there's a link to it you could you just want one orientation you just want it on 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 one of them so if we turn them all on and we just do so we set that back to one and we just do down z and we want that one to be 64. so you just have to find your way through this and learn which which is the orientation that you want. And straight away, you can see that's now going around the, the area that I'm describing, which is coming out of the screen on, on, on Z. So now with a very low intensity and a largest brush, I can just pull that out a little bit. And basically I'm just making that, that area that I want there, the bump at the front of the eye, like that. Smaller brush and drag it back and it'll give us a very defined bump. You can, you, maybe I should have showed you this before I did the transparency. That might have been a good idea. But you can see there roughly you've got the, the, the shape that you want. Um, I'll turn that grid off now because we don't need that anymore. So there you go. So that's the transparency done and the, and the shell done for now. We might have to tweak that a little bit. Um, so what we can do is we can now bring this other one back on and you can see that's inside now shows it a little bit better now like that so for the moment i don't need the outer one so we'll hide that and we know this is the front over here on this side so if we just do snap and we go to sel mask and rectangle 
and we just basically in fact just before i do that i'm going to knock the subdivision up because i want to paint this in a minute so i've done about three subdivides um in fact i'll do four because i'll go super high res straight away um, and now all i want to do is mask off to the point roughly where the um where that bump's going to be and this is going to give us the space at the front which is going to be our iris you can see that's probably a little bit too big there so i'll just snap it again and just add a bit more oops daisy snap it again and with the rectangle just go over a little bit more like that let's have a look what that looks like i think that's fine and now if we go back to clay you can see oops need symmetry back on don't we make sure our symmetry is on because we've gone to a new model we have to reset that symmetry so it was z and we'll keep it on what we were on which is 64. it's a little bit tricky when you're starting that to remember to do that because it is per model so don't forget like i just did to do that so you can see there now it's it's on and it's protected everywhere but the front like that so if that's the case we can have a small brush and we can just pull in a, a pupil here so we'll use the move tool again and a little bit too big there just right in the center no get it right in a moment there we go and we'll just i mean this is a, a good way of changing when you do the layering later on you can change the size of the pupil as uh, you know to, to show surprise etc i'm just smoothing it down a bit now in fact i'll just undo that bit because i got myself a ridge there so we'll bring that in and basically your pupil is just a hole that sees right the way through to the retina so this is the thing this is like your camera aperture this is where the light goes in so obviously we need it to be completely dark in there um and in real life you you, you know if you if you look at what you see on a fox or a cat at night that's what you see uh, at the back there reflecting um i'm just using smooth there to smooth it down radially and there we're quite good to go so what we can do now is we could just remove that masking, but there's no point because it's quite useful to have that on, um, simply because we're only gonna paint in this middle bit. And what I always do is I just paint everything completely black. So if we go paint and we'll go all the way up and size up and we just paint it all black. And the reason I do that is I like to have um, a, a slightly black outline around the edge of the iris. And of course the pupil is dark because of the fact of what it is, it's a hole. So that's a good place to start, I always find. Now we'll do green eyes, I think I was I was planning on doing. So we wanna to go to paint, and we want to then just pick a some sort of greenish color, and we'll just see what happens. You can see there, I'm just painting. This is literally exactly what I did six or seven years ago for that ZBrush video that I talked about at the start. Um, it, it's almost packet perfect the same it's it's incredible that the i'm doing it now on an ipad in, in in the same way so i've just laid down something you know something green um it's probably a little bit too shiny now this surface so what we'll do is we'll knock down the roughness because we've got an outer shiny bit remember we don't need that so i'll force paint this now um, and that's that's flattened it out a bit for us now so all we've got to do now is is, is paint so let's just go back and put that black in for the iris so we want that to be black right up to the edge of that of that hole, like that, to the pupil, sorry. Um, and then we can start thinking about the, the, the iris. So theoretically, um, let me just clear the mask and have a look. No, we filled it in, didn't we? So I'm gonna mask, tap and invert, and then I'll do, um, I want to think about this being creamy white going into a red. So we'll paint that low intensity and we'll go for, like a yellowy creamy white something like that and a blend like so and then we'll take that to um like a pinky white at the back like that like so see it lagging a little bit there that's quite surprising i suppose the amount of uh information that i'm throwing at it is giving it a little bit of uh, of a delay so just just be aware of that um, and let's go even whiter at the front just to make sure we've got really, really white at the edges here. So I'm just going to roll that light around a bit just to see. And now might not be a bad idea to add a light. So we'll add a light, call it a spotlight. Um, and we'll just put our light icons on so that we can see it. There you go. 
and then we know where the front is so what we want to do is we want the light to be a bit more intense and we want the gizmo oops wrong one gizmo for the light we want and we want to bring that round i'm just moving it so we get a little bit of a a little bit of a highlight or a little bit more brightness at the front like that and then we'll tap on it again and we'll increase the cone angle increase the softness and the intensity so it's just giving us a bit more brightness around there maybe a bit higher out of my way i don't want to keep turning that off there we go that'll do for now um so we go mask invert and we're back onto the this inner part now so um i think because i went too far with the green i think what i found is i lost that that um black line i was talking about so we'll go back to paint and we'll just make sure we've got a dark line at the edge like that because i want to leave that right on the edge and now we'll come and use one of the alphas it doesn't really matter what you use because we're going to put a lot of um uh, striations and a lot of really you know uh, a lot of complexity in this bit now and you can see here and what we don't want to do is what I've just currently done and this is what we're going to be striving against is that that looks very symmetrical and very repetitive so our job now is to break that down a, a, a little bit keep changing the the alphas if you've got different alphas and if not download some and start you know start building up your own alpha pack um, de definitely prefer you to have your own than than other people's overall it would be nice to um to, to make sure you've you know you've, you're building up and learning your own um skills of how to make alphas but if not there's, there's plenty knocking around including ours if, if you want them from from down below in our description so i'm just being a bit random there so now symmetry and we want to change that from 32 i'll just bring it down to something like um, this is now going to be it's not arbitrary and it's not it's not a set anymore now it's just a little bit more random so and this will start to break the symmetry so i'm trying to put the striations in a little bit and then you can see that's still symmetrical so i'm going to break that again and now i'm going to do another one with and obviously that's not now not following the the symmetry quite as uh, as predictably as it was and the idea here is just to keep changing that number until you get the kind of striations that you like so keep changing all of your parameters go to radial again come come down even more now um, and then just add it in and start looking at how it, it you know zoom in if needed and start thinking about how r random these variations are and how they they're like the, the the good way to think about it one you should get reference and two you should think about it like muscle fibers so it's fibers that are coming together and moving around so it, you know if you look at reference you'll see exactly what i mean you should be looking at a, 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 a real eye and you should be looking close up on a real eye so you can start seeing exactly what i'm thinking about now so let's zoom out and that doesn't look too bad uh, it's just a bit too um that that odd whiteness around the edge there so i'm going to go around like this just bring it right to that edge and then I'll go back in with a dark one and a smaller brush and just put some striations back in there. And you can go to town with this. You could spend hours and hours doing this kind of thing and have, having fun with it. Um, you know, it, it, there, there, there's a lot of complexity in an iris alone. So, you know, go, go, and, go and do some research, go and understand what's, what, what causes an iris to do what it does. And finally there, I've gone down to just two so now you can see that the randomness is, you know, you're, you're not really going to be able to pick out any um, uh, any of that repetitive, symmetrical look if you do it like this. And now the last bit is adding in those, those again like that. Now, if there's anything that's too, you know, not quite looking good, you can go in with a smudge tool, um, a small brush, medium intensity, and just smudge that a bit. If there's anything that you want to, you know, you can see me there just smudging out to the edge a bit too much, actually. Um, and there you go.
So let's call it a day at that. I think we've got enough for what we want. So that gives us our eye. I'm going to break the edge a little bit with a smudge. You can see me there just being a bit wobbly because eye's not completely um, smooth all the way around. And I'll make sure I definitely do that edge like so. And then the last little bit is just put something like a darkish red and we're going to want to use paint again with small and the symmetry. We can turn that down to one. We don't even want this symmetrical. And that just allows me to put some veins in there. And that just gives me a little bit more reality when you see those little bit of, especially if you're someone my age, it's, you know, I, I'm a great reference because I'm full of red veins like this. Put a few in the iris, iris as well. Um, bring them out. Make sure you zigzag them up and down. Can't be a good iris and a little bit of a blood clot, you know, there's always a, a bit of a, one of these that's got a bit too much blood in it. Um, so it's a bit thicker at certain parts. And there you go. Turn on the outer shell. Now you can tell obviously that that doesn't look right. So make sure you go up to the settings and you can either bring that down or you can, you, there's one or two things you can change like the additive. I wouldn't do that because um, it, it, it would look less realistic but what you could do is if you back on to your blending go and play with it with colors so you know you might want to say increase the uh, lower that roughness even more but increase the metalness and force paint that and that gives you a little bit more of that um, it's, it's a bit too glassy for this particular instance but if that was in the eye, if that was sat in the socket, I wouldn't be too worried about that at all. I'm going to bring it right in tight to the edge so you don't see that quite as much. And then if we rotate that light round, you can see that really picking up the eye now. So that really starts to show you how this works. When you, I'm basically doing the three finger um, uh, rotate around with the HDRI and you can see it moving across the surface and the bent surface. So that's exactly how I was doing this six, seven years ago um, and it's no different now, but we've got radial symmetry in Nomad. So how exciting is that we can do this kind of thing? So I'll do a few more of these radial symmetry ones because um, I do believe these these are, you know, these are quite useful um, for us to, to, to learn a bit more about texturing with radial and they, they stand you in good stead in so many ways, whether it be mechanical, organic, whether it be, you know, tires, wheels, um, whether it be like this, an eye, you know, or, or a starfish, there's all sorts you can use, but have a go of that and let's have a look at it and see what you can come up with. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you are enjoying it, please give us a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of other people who might like this kind of content. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and then we'll just pester you to let you know that we are gonna drop more videos. So everybody have a great week and I'll see you on the next video.